So there's two types of blacksmith in this world. The first one absolutely hates power hammers. They think they're cheating, it's non-traditional. Every time you look at a hammer, you're a bad blacksmith. The second type of blacksmith loves power hammers. They think they're the best possible thing ever created by mankind. I'll be the latter of the two. But with any power hammer, if you can't control it, there's no point in having it. So the industry standard is you take a matchbox like this and you open it up, and then you close it with the dies just like that. I'll show you how this works. Okay, so this is my power hammer. If you've seen any of my previous videos, like any of them, you've seen this in it, cause my baby. You know what? Let's throw like five seconds of power hammer on collage right now, go. Okay, so one thing that is tricky about this hammer is it was made in 1950 and there's not a lot of literature about how to use it, how to maintain it and stuff like that. So one thing that's super cool about the blacksmithing community is that people are generally pretty friendly and willing to help out. So a guy by the name of Mark Kraus just recently reached out to me and he is kind of known in the blacksmithing community as the power hammer whisperer. This guy just fixes power hammers. He knows everything about them. So if you get something from him, you want to kind of pay attention. So Mark was mentioning that the way this is lubricated is possibly not the, dang it, ah! And it's a really strong possibility that the bearings are actually not bearings, bushings are supposed to be lubricated with oil. And if they are supposed to be lubricated with oil, then I've been doing it really wrong for a couple of years. He did say that sometimes in the newer hammers they have bearings and in that, that case you need to be using grease. So what I'm actually doing right now is I'm taking off the back cover, which is gonna open up and we're gonna see if we have a bushing or a bearing. If we have a bearing, then I'm okay. If we have a bushing, then I've got a lot of work to do today. Let's see, this thing is gonna come off easy or hard? There she goes. Ah, okay, very cool. I think we've got a, a bearing in there. So this is the part, the top casing. Is that a seal? Oh, it is a seal. Oh, and it's like missing. Interesting. That's really bad. I just pulled that out from underneath the bushing. Ah, sorry, the bearing. Oh shoot, it's gonna be a problem. So there you can see this bearing so that's super good it's not a bushing lots of grease in there just so happy right now never ever does it work out that i was actually doing something right all right so i guess this sits that is a repair job i think it sits like this it's kind of weird not sure why that's cut shouldn't matter because it just holds the bearing centered i'm going to spend a little bit more time cleaning out the grease and then i just got to figure out what i'm going to do about those two wipers on the front and then we'll put this back together and then I gotta go on to the second problem. Oh, Tim. Oh, Tim. Oh, Tim. <laughs> Wouldn't expect anything less, right? Oh my goodness, there's like grease. Looks like an outhouse in there. I can see the ring, I can see it. Okay, I got a magnet thing. You can see it. See you. Gotcha. Easy, Tim. Gotcha. Okay, that wasn't too dramatic. Whew, just the way I like it. So there you can see I've got the felt stuck in. That's this here as far as I can go. This pushed under. And then I'm just gonna actually have to trim it a little bit because I wasn't able to get it back in as far as it came out. All right, here we go. Okay, hey, that's good. All right, let's tighten it up. Okay, so the main bearing is 
back together. I just have to grease it, but I'm going to wait to the end to do that. So now we're going to get on to the second thing that Mark was talking about. There's this dip or a pool of oil in there and the crankshaft hits it and splash lubricates the inside. And that's what Mark was talking to me about. I have the splash going on on the inside. You can actually stir up enough oil that the machine will inhale it, goes through the system and can affect the performance of the hammer, which is exactly what has been happening. And also, look at this. You live in a pool of oil all day long when you work on this hammer. And it's like ridiculously gritty and dirty. Okay, take a look inside here. Can you see that stuff down there? Hannah, I'm gonna grab it. Look at that. Do you know what that is? Okay, we're gonna put that back in there for now. From a Tim who is so frustrated of breathing in oil that I was sticking paper towel in here to plug this hole because it vents and you're chewing on oil. And I guess it, over the time it has slipped in there and worked itself down and sitting in the oil. So that is super, super bad. So anyways, we are gonna clear this out, but uh, that's the main crankshaft there. And then the bearing, the second bearing is up in here. I know you can't see that, I can't either, but I'm looking at it now. There is no way that grease is gonna go through and oil or grease this thing here. So there's gotta be a grease nipple on this, or otherwise this is the right way to go. But look at this, that on the front there. I wonder if that's an old school grease nipple. No way, maybe it is. Okay, that's not tight. Sure enough, look at that. It's got a little ball on this side. Indent, that looks like oil. Never seen that for grease. Unless it's like a really old school grease gun that you would, you know, clip it on there and then it would push into the ball, which maybe it is. I'm not super familiar with that kind of setup, but interesting, hey? If that's supposed to be greased in there, it's been about uh, 21 years since it's been greased. Yeah, there's some grease there. It's a honking big bearing that's completely dry. Completely dry. I don't know if you can see this. This is the cover I took off. This cavity, I'm totally assuming is supposed to be full of grease. And the bearing's right there. No grease. You can see all the rollers, so who knows what that bearing is. Like, you know, if the splash was getting in there, sure, that's great, but I don't, I don't think the splash was getting in there at all. I might have to talk to Mark about this. This is the part that I don't understand. Is this good or is this bad? So I was just talking to Mark and he said the bearing is supposed to move side to side like that. And I asked him if he thought I cooked it and he said to use a bar just to see if there's any play up and down. I don't feel anything. You can see I'm actually starting to move it up. So that would mean if there's play, I would feel it right there. Okay, I think we're okay. Whew. So it's a bit of a story, but the oil in there is so thick that if I put a spout on to drop it down, it doesn't really run out. So I'm just gonna let it run down the side of the machine and then go into this baby bath here. Look at that contrast, that's crazy. Okay, so I pretty much got the whole hammer uh, wiped down with the WD-40 and now I'm just gonna use the brake cleaner to take some of that WD-40 off just so it's not so greasy and pick up dust and stuff again. And then we're gonna be uh, finished cleaning this up. So as it turns out, this grease nipple is called a button head style. I guess it's an older style. I was able to track down the adapter that you put on your grease gun. So this goes in like that, the grease gun on here, and then I can fill that up. So it's a little bit crazy that I had to buy the adapter, but I guess that's the best way to go about it. So we're gonna quickly jam that bearing full of grease, put the cover on, pump it full, and we should be good to go, get this bad boy running. <sighs> Okay, so I'm gonna put the cover in here. So close it up. Let's try this one. Hopefully that works. Oh, 
my sleep. Hey, cameraman. <laughs> okay, so as we close this up here, getting almost done. I also wanted to uh, announce that I have, after much thought and losing sleep, decided to start a Patreon page. Crazy, right? Truth is, uh, the videos I love making, but the cost of them, the amount of money we get from ad revenue doesn't cover the cost of the time and all the effort that we put into this. So anyways, that's why I'm starting Patreon. Uh, I am excited about starting that for right now. I'd like you to think about it just as like, you love the content that I'm putting on YouTube, you wanna support me, and so you go to Patreon and do that. That's kind of what I'm thinking about it right now. But uh, I've got quite a few ideas that I'd like to sort of start doing on Patreon as we start to grow there. So anyways, what I've done for the tier levels is I named them after some of my favorite power hammers. So the first tier is the Little Giant, second one is the Fairbanks, then we go to the Budry, which is kind of like the top of the line mechanical hammer. We go into the Massey, the Nasal, and then finally the top tier is the Beche. Yeah, just looking forward to uh, continue on making these videos for you. Hope you like watching them. Please subscribe, like this video. Oh wait, we're not even done. What am I saying? We still gotta bolt this up. Okay, we'll wait to the end for that, but. Uh, it's like it doesn't fit anything. I feel like this is not complicated, right? Yeah, right? No, it doesn't. Okay, so right, yeah, I'm heading back to town to find something that will work for us here. This doesn't work. Okay, so I'm back from town. I think I got this sorted, had to buy a new hose. Hopefully this will work out for us. Okay, let's try this, like, $120 setup here. Wow, so happy. Like pulling on it with the cord, that could not be right. It's working though. Putting the grease in there. All right, I'm gonna pump forever now. I gotta fill up this cavity. Oh. Okay, let's start it up. Oh, wait a second. That's really bad. So one of the things that I've had a bit of a hard time knowing what to do with is what kind of oil to run in this hammer. That was something Mark also helped me out with and he recommended running just straight 30 weight non-detergent. So that's what this is here. This is the oiler for the uh, pistons. Just top that up, good to go. And uh, we're back in service. Okay, thanks for watching guys. It's links down below, Mark's website. If you have some old equipment or power hammer that you need some work done or troubleshooting, check that out. Also, Patreon, I'm gonna put the link down below. Would super appreciate any support at all from that. And we will look forward to seeing you next video, which is gonna be hopefully next week. And that's gonna be it for me. Have a great rest of your day, evening, whenever you're watching this, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., whenever. See ya, bye.